Hey coders, Darren here, and today we're asking the very important question of how the heck did they make that? And in today's episode, we are looking at a game known as the Kerbal Space Program. So we're actually addressing a request from Eviscero, who wanted to know how the Kerbal Space Program devs were able to accomplish the docking feature shown here. This is going to be a two-part episode, so first, in this tutorial, we're going to get our ship maneuvering with various thrusters. So let's start off by adding a few assets for the skybox, the ship, and the particle system for the thrusters. So we're going to get the skybox and the ship from the asset store, and I'll go ahead and credit the asset authors in the description if you want to go ahead and follow along. The first asset that we're going to grab is the skybox volume 2 nebula edition, and the next one is the destructor spaceship. So you can find both of these on the asset store and just click import. And after they're done importing, you'll be able to see them in your project's asset folder. Finally, we want to add Unity's particle system because our ship's angle thrusters are going to have some emitters on them to make them look a little bit more fun. So you can find these by going to Assets, Import Package, and clicking Particle Systems. And then a window is going to appear providing import options so you can select the individual assets you'd like to add to your project. For our needs, we can remove Cross-Platform Input, Editor, and Utility. Furthermore, we can go ahead and remove the scripts folder from the particle systems folder. So now that we have our assets together, we need to begin setting our scene up. We need to set the skybox, add the ship, place the thruster positions, and create the particles. So let's begin by finding our skybox. So I'm going to open my lighting window settings, which can be found by clicking window from the toolbar and finding the lighting menu. And once you have the lighting window, you can find the skybox material under environment and a list of possible materials will appear. So simply choose the material that looks best to you. For me, I liked the one that was labeled DSBWP and this skybox features a planetary ring with some rock fragments scattered about. Okay, so now we just want to find our ship from our assets folder and simply drag it into the scene somewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and zero out the position as well. The next thing that we want to do is set up our thruster positions. For the sake of visibility, I'm going to be using small spheres to represent my thrusters. The purpose of these thrusters is to give our ship full maneuverability control. Our players will need to be able to manipulate the yaw, pitch, and roll of the ship, where yaw indicates rotation on the ship's local y-axis, pitch indicates rotation on the ship's local x-axis, and roll indicates rotation on the ship's local z-axis. Now one thing to keep in mind throughout this tutorial is that different ship models may have different local axis orientations. For instance, the ship being used in this tutorial right now has a forward uh, on the y-axis instead of the z-axis, which is what most of us are comfortable with. So I'm just placing these thrusters around the ship in a way that makes physical sense. For instance, my pitch thrusters, which make the ship aim up or down, should be placed at the front and the rear of the ship. The layout that I'm creating here will make a lot more sense after you see it in action. Just know that we need a variety of yaw, pitch, and roll thrusters, and we also need a main thruster which propels the ship forward, which of course will be placed at the rear of the ship. Okay, now I want to be sure to name all of my thrusters after I have them positioned correctly so that they're more identifiable from the hierarchy when I need to work with them later. If you watch how I name these, you'll gain a better understanding of which thrusters I'm intending to use for yaw, pitch, or roll. Now that I've named all of my thrusters, I want to go ahead and drag them to be a child of my ship. Now I'm going to add a particle system to my thrusters. Because this tutorial isn't focused on particles whatsoever, I don't want to waste anybody's time with going through all of the configuration. The particles require a lot of tweaking to get just right, and perhaps that can be something that's covered in a separate tutorial. It's also worth mentioning that this full project will be available for download by patrons who graciously support us on patreon.com. Now I'm going to do some more not so necessary configuration on the thrusters. I'm basically just rotating them in the direction that will make visual sense when the ship is maneuvering. For instance, the rear pitch thruster, which kicks the nose of the ship upward when activated, needs to be aimed upward so the particles appear to be applying some force on the ship's rear. Now let's configure the ship's rigid body. So first I need to remove the animation that came with this particular ship by default. Then I'll go ahead and add the rigid body in. All we want to do here is set the mass to 100, the drag to 0.5, and the angular drag to 0.1. So mass is going to affect the way add force and add torque functions affect the rigid body. 
drag affects how resistant the ship is to physics forces, and angular drag affects how resistant the ship is to physics torque. Interestingly enough, the size of the collider a rigid body has plays a major role in how these values affect the rigid body. So keep that in mind when you're setting the size of your collider, or if you run into behaviors that look different than the ones that are shown in this tutorial. Now we're almost ready to begin programming. I just want to go ahead and create and save a scene so I don't lose any of my progress. Now let's go ahead and create the scripts that we'll need to get our ship moving. We're going to need a script called ship, ship camera, and ship thruster. Now let's go ahead and add the ship script to our ship object, the ship camera script to the main camera object, and then the ship thruster to all of the thruster objects. And then we're going to begin by opening up the ship.cs file. So we'll start by clearing out the script, and then we want to add three main classes uh, that's going to help sort of organize our ship thrusters. We're going to add the roll thrusters class, which holds four separate thrusters. We're going to create the pitch thrusters class, which controls two thrusters for the up and down pitch. And then finally, we're going to have a class for the yaw thrusters, which like the roll thrusters, will have four thrusters to control the yaw. So we need to think about the member variables the ship class is going to need. Well, we definitely need public references to the roll, pitch, and yaw thrusters, so we can go ahead and give those a value from the inspector. Don't forget to add a main thruster reference as well. We also want to use a hash table for torques and forces. Torque manipulates the roll, pitch, and yaw of our ship, and we will use force to push the ship forward or side to side. For this tutorial, we only will be thrusting the ship forward, but we can easily extend that functionality by including the hash table for now. Since we are manipulating the torque and force, we will need to add a reference for our rigid body. Now I did add some references for the roll, pitch, and yaw input, but we won't actually be using those in this script, so don't worry about adding those to your script. We want to build our class skeleton so we have a good idea of this class's responsibilities. We will add start for initialization, update for processing once per frame, and then add a couple of handler methods to manage the torque and forces. We can call these handle roll, handle pitch, handle yaw, handle main thruster, handle torques, and handle forces. Now we want to be sure to call these handler methods within our update function. To initialize this ship, we need to call git component for the ship's rigid body and simply initialize those two hash tables that we declared above. Now we need a way of reading the player's input to determine when the ship should roll, pitch, or yaw. We can add methods for roll left, roll right, pitch up, pitch down, yaw left, yaw right, and main thruster. Notice that all we're doing here is returning true if the player presses a certain key, and returning false otherwise. The only difference between these functions is which key is being checked for. We could condense this into a single method where we pass key code as a parameter, but this setup will really improve the readability throughout our script. We're going to need to take some action when these inputs are used by the player. We're going to call these methods from our handler methods. For handle roll, we can check if we are rolling right. If we are, then we need to start the right thrusters and stop the left thrusters. Notice that we are accessing the roll thrusters that we defined above when we are doing this. If we are rolling left, then we stop the right thrusters and start the left thrusters. If we're not rolling right or rolling left, then we stop all of the roll thrusters. The pattern is the same for all of the handler functions. First, we check if an input is being pressed. If it is, then we stop and start certain thrusters. If no input is being pressed, then we stop all of the thrusters. So for now, we are finished with the ship class, but let's go ahead and move to the ship thruster class now. We need a vector 3 to give our ship some information on which direction a particular thruster moves the ship in. Since thrusters can add torque or force, we'll have a bool that tells the script if it should add force or torque to the ship. The ship thrusters will also have a reference to the particle system, a bool to determine if the thrusters are active, and an identifier so the ship can easily reference the thruster in the torque and force hash tables. Now let's build Build out the skeleton for the ship thruster. We need to use the start event function to initialize a few values and then start and stop thrust functions which are going to be used by the ship class. 
In start, we need to initialize the ship by grabbing the parent component. Remember that our thruster objects were made a direct child of the ship. Then we need to go ahead and use git component to initialize the particle system and use git instance ID to give this thruster an identifier that's going to be used by the ship's hash tables. In start thrust, we only need to do something if the thrusters are off. If they are, then we go ahead and play the particles and add either force or torque depending on the is force member variable defined above. We call the methods ship.addForce and ship.addTorque and pass this thruster's identifier and force value to the ship. The add force and add torque methods are going to be added to the ship class in just a moment. Finally, we make sure to set is on to true. The stop thrust method is very similar. We only need to stop the thrust if it is currently on. If it is, then we stop the particles and remove force or torque on the ship. Then don't forget to set is on to false. Now we need to go back to the ship class and add the public add and remove torque and force functions that are used by the thrusters. So we're going to need the functions add torque, remove torque, add force, and remove force. The ID passed as a parameter to these functions is going to be the key to our force and torque hash tables. When we add torque to the system, we first check to see if the torques collection already uses the thruster with identifier ID. If it does, we do nothing. If the system doesn't use the thruster yet, then we add it along with its torque value to the system. When we remove torque, we check to see if the system is currently using the ID. If it is, we remove the torque from the system. The add force and remove force methods are twins of the torque methods. Remember we use torque to manage rotation and force to manage translation. Now that we have the means to add and remove torque and force in the system, we need a way of actually using those forces on the ship. We use handle torques and handle forces to do this. In handle torques, we just iterate through the torques hash table. We retrieve the torque vector and use it in the ship's rigid body function add relative torque. We normalize torque in this instance. Handle forces is essentially the same. The only difference is that we iterate through the forces hash table, retrieve the force, and use add relative force on the ship's rigid body. In this case, force is not normalized. We have finally finished the bulk of this system, and all that is left is the camera. But right now, we need to go ahead and run a test to make sure that it works properly. We need to go to our thrusters and set the force vector from the inspector. This is a little bit tricky if you don't understand what's going on. Remember earlier I noted that different ships are going to have different local coordinate systems. So this ship's forward vector may be different from the ship's forward that you're using. My ship's forward is negative y. Therefore, my roll axis values need to be on the y value of the force vector. I will set both of my roll right thrusters to 0, 5, 0. My roll left thrusters are going to be 0, negative 5, 0. My pitch up thruster is going to be set to negative 5, 0, 0. My pitch down thruster is going to be set to 5, 0, 0. And then moving forward, my yaw right thruster will be set to 0, 0, 5. My yaw left thrusters will be 0, 0, negative 5. And finally, my main forward thruster will be 0, negative 100, 0 and is force needs to be checked here because it is a translation motion on the ship. This is what's going to propel the ship forward. Now I mentioned this earlier but the system isn't going to work very well if the ship does not have a collider on it. The size of this collider will also influence how the rigid body's drag and angular drag affect the forces on the ship. So add a collider to the ship and size it to the shape of your ship. After you've done that, press play and use the QE buttons to roll, the AD buttons to yaw, and the WS buttons to pitch. As I said in the beginning, this is going to be a two-part episode. Next week, I just want to focus on the docking mechanic for the Kerbal Space Program project. So to close this tutorial up, I want to go ahead and create this simple ship camera for you. And this camera just needs to give the player the ability to rotate around the ship by clicking the mouse button. So the two main functions for this camera are to move with the target and to rotate around the target. So we need a transform target, which will be the ship, a vector three offset from the target, a follow speed, and a look speed. We also need a vector to keep track of the current orbit angle, a target rotation quaternion, and a target position vector. Now our skeleton is going to be pretty simple. We need fixed update, which updates one to three cycles per frame, and this tends to be best for cameras. Then we need a move to target function, a look at target function, and an orbit function. In fixed update, we simply add the private class functions that need to be updated. 
In move to target, we set the target pause by multiplying the orbit rotation by the offset of the ship. This gives us a normalized rotated vector with a multiplier of offset. With that, we have to add the ship's actual position to the target position. Once we have our target position, we simply lerp to it from our camera's position. To look at the target, we just need to grab the quaternion look rotation function and pass the target position minus the camera's position. This returns the look vector rotation. Then we conduct a slurp operation from the camera's rotation to the target rotation. Finally, our orbit function checks if we are clicking the left mouse button, and if we are, we subtract the built-in mouse Y input and add the built-in mouse X input. I multiply each by 5 here to increase the mouse sensitivity a little bit. Finally, we are done with the programming side of things for this tutorial, and all that's left to do is drag the ship into the target field of the camera script. Then you can just press play, click and drag, and view your ship from any angle. I found that using a move speed of 10 and a look speed of 100 really improved the feel of the camera.